Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geek Element Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials where in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to create actions and outlets within the Swift language. Now already in my project set up, it's a simple single view application for the iPhone and I've simply named it actions and outlets and it's using the Swift language all for the purpose of this tutorial. Now what we're going to be doing is taking our previous tutorials where we learnt how to add variables and basically use functions from within the playground and we're going to kind of use them, adapt them and implement them in creating some actions and outlets. If you can see already if you haven't really noticed that we don't have the .h and the .m where we would have in a Objective C project. We have one kind of um, class here which contains both our action and our outlet all within it. So it's basically combined in the .h and .m to basically become a .swift file. Now what we're going to do is again also combine a previous tutorial that we've learned about and that's constraints where we can add objects in, um, add the constraints and they will resize themselves depending on what view for the screen so we can create it almost like a universal application. So what we're basically going to do in this tutorial is have a button and create an action for it and have a label and create an outlet for it and when we press the button it's simply going to display text within our label. So to enable us to do this, we need to add the button and the label within our view. So what we're going to do is simply get our button here, and I'm going to drag and drop it in. And you can see that our view is an inferred view. If I just go to there, you see it's inferred. There's no particular size set, so this is not a particular view for any type of device. Uh, we're using this so we can kind of create our interface. And again, once we add the constraints like we did in our previous tutorials, uh, it'll resize no matter what. So I'm going to add in the label too. It's underneath our button there. Forget the, there we go. And then I'm just going to center it and then get down to the bottom and then go to add our missing constraints or within the selected view or within all view. So I'm just going to go in our selected view and that's added that in. If you want to learn more about constraints and how they work, make sure you go check out our previous tutorial on constraints. So now that we have done that, we need to open up our assistant editor. Now make sure it's selected on our view controller.swift, the correct class for the view that we are working in. And what we're going to do is simply, just after the parentheses there, I'm going to space that out there and here. So as you can see, we already have our functions for our view did load and did receive memory warning. That's very common what you would see in an Objective-C project. So how this works then, we can you know, name our outlets and define them at the top area and then start to add our functions below at the bottom. So I'm going to start with our label, just use the simple um, right click and drag or control click and drag it over and simply paste it in. And we simply name our label, simply label. So it's not very different from how you create labels and actions or outlets uh, within Objective-C to Swift, but how it kind of sets them out is completely different. So we connect that up. And then you can see here. So in our previous tutorial, we learned about variables. You can see we work in the same kind of area. We have our at IB outlet. So we turn it to an outlet and then we select in our variable. We give our variable a name, but we're not defining it to the name. We then do our colon and then UI label to basically say that this variable is a label. So we're kind of working a little bit backwards from how we created the variables such as strings and ints within our previous tutorials. So now we created our outlet there and linked it up to our label. We're going to get our button, do the same, but we add the button, we're going to place it in there. And then all of it's the connection is still called an action, and I simply name this button. Uh, we're going to make sure it's got any object, um, event, touch up inside, and take the sender off as we don't really need it to display text within our label. And I'm going to connect that up. So although, we, again, it, although it's called an action, it's basically creating a function. So we have IB action, so we're defining that our button is going to create an action, and then the function of our button is simply named button, and the function that it will perform is whatever we place within the two parentheses brackets there. And then what we're going to do is simply get it to display text within a label. Now what we've done on an Objective C project is have label.text equals at symbol, uh, and then the string within the quotation marks, and we end it with a semicolon which is very similar to how we do it in Swift. But there's a few little things we don't need to add, making it more simplified and easier to code. For example, we do at the name of our label, and then we slot the dot text feature. So we get our label, and then we basically get in the text function of our label as we want to work with the text within our label. 
and then all we really simply want it to do is then equal our string. So where we would have normally done at symbol quotation mark quotation mark, we're just doing two quotation marks. And I'm simply I'm going to put within it hello. Now there's no need to end it with a semicolon as we don't need to close up any lines or anything like that. It automatically does it every line. So as you can see there, it's a little bit more simpler and easier and you don't have to worry about missing out the semicolon, which I'm sure a lot of you, including myself, have done quite a lot. So there we go. We've added in our outlet and we've added in our action and give it the function to perform. So I'm going to close the assistant editor and go back to the standard editor and you can see there we got our view with the constraints added. I'm going to go straight up to build and run and test it out and show you exactly how it works. Okay now, so once our project loads up in the simulator, you can see we have our button and our label resized using the constraints. So when we go to interact with our button, we simply press it and it displays the text that we set within the string into our label. So if we go back into the view control.swift just to quickly show you, we got our label.text or equal the string of hello. And this is all happening within the function of our action button. So there we go. It's as simple as that to create actions and outlets within the Swift language. Hey guys, just before we click off this video, I have a few more bits of information that I'd love to share with you. But just before I do, if this tutorial helped you in any way, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description below. If you want more on-to-date and in-depth tutorials on iOS 8, Xcode 6 and the Swift language, then make sure you guys enroll in our complete iOS 8 and Xcode 6 course. The links will be in the description below. And if you guys want to learn on the go, make sure you download our Xcode tutorial application from the App Store where you can get much more than what we offer on YouTube. Again, links for this will be in the description below. And if you guys want to kick back and blow off a bit of steam, make sure you go check out my gaming channel where we have a lot of fun, play with a lot of friends and generally just have a good time. So make sure again, you go subscribe to that channel. But once more, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.